Now let's talk about constitutional, also called structural isomers, and branched chain alkanes. So in addition to straight chain alkanes, which we said were called N-alkanes or N-butane, for example, uh, branched chain alkanes are possible. And when we do that, we can have uh, constitutional isomers of C4H10, one of which you were familiar with because I've already done it, uh, called N-butane. So one, two, three, four. And I've got my C4 here. I've taken off my hydrogens, which with this modeling kit, incidentally, were much easier to take off than with some of the older modeling kits I've had to deal with. But, um, but what we want to talk about for uh, constitutional isomers is that they have the same formula, but they have different bonding patterns. different bonding patterns, which is another way of saying different bonds. Uh, so for example, here we've got four carbons in a row. To make a constitutional or structural isomer, you actually break a bond and put it back someplace else. This is definitely a different molecule. The longest chain of carbons here is three. And how we would do this is one, two, oop, three, and then four. It's not a very good. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four carbons there. And that has a different name, as we'll see. Um, now let's do constitutional isomers of C5H12. C5H12 is also an alkane. That's why we taught you that CNH2N plus two is so that you would know this is an alkane. You don't need any double bonds or triple bonds. And uh, let's take a second and build that. I always like to build five carbons in a row at first and then tear it apart and get smaller. So there's five carbons in what we might be, what is called the zigzag configuration because there are five in a row as opposed to having them look like this. It is the same molecule. The molecule can rotate like that because these are all single bonds and all single bonds can rotate. However, for ease of drawing, we do typically draw it in what's called the zigzag configuration. And uh, it doesn't matter when you draw it uh, like this or like that. Like many things, as you know me now, I have a system, which is I generally start down one and go up two, three, four, five. There's my five carbons, and it looks just like that. If you draw it like this, that's fine as well. One thing to point out is that when you have an odd number of carbons, you'll start low and end low. Whereas when you have an even number of carbons, you'll start low and end what I call high, meaning uh, up part. And that's not that helpful when you've got four or five carbons, but sometimes you'll have 15 or 20 and you're trying to decide whether it's 15 or 16. Then you want to look at whether you start, how you start and end. That's one constitutional isomer. So what you want to do is you want to break off one off the end put it together in a new way. And you can see that this one has four carbons in a row with one branched off. This is the branched, one of the branched ones. So we go one, two, three, four. And let's see, so we'll do it like that. So one, two, three, four. And then off of one of the middle ones, we've got one going down like so. Now, if I were to break it off and put it here, that is actually the same molecule, which I think you can see. So whether it's on either of these two middle carbons, you can rotate it and end up with the same thing. So if I were to go one, two, three, four, like that, that is not a different molecule. That is a rotation. 
of this one. And there is still one more to make. And what you have to do is you just have to play with these things until you get something different. Like if you take this and you move it over here and you're like, oh, that looks just like the second one I made. That is not different. And we are going to come up with how you name them. We'll tell you that these are the same. We'll talk about that soon. But it turns out uh, we've got uh, another system to do is, remember, we started with five in a row. Now we've got four in a row. Let's see if we can make three in a row. And to do that, we're breaking bonds, right? These are all breaking bonds. And I mean, it helps that I know what the answer is true, but this is another constitutional or structural isomer. And the longest chain, one of the ways you know it's different is the longest chain here is three in a row. And this, there's a couple ways to draw it. Um, the best way would be uh, one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. That would be an okay way to do it. And then you could do uh, one, two, you could actually draw it because it is, it's in tetrahedral. You could actually draw it in the tetrahedral configuration. That is my favorite way to draw it as we know. And so we'd be drawing it like that. So these three would be flat. One would be sticking out at you and one would be sticking back. Also a fine way to do it. But these are the one, two, three constitutional isomers of C5H12. Now let's talk about how we tell all those isomers apart. It is with names and each of them has a different name and we will have a few um, side groups also called substituents. And um, we've got that, again, you will have to know, we've got methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, and then isopropyl is an important one too. That happens quite a bit. And actually, while these are uh, useful, isobutyl, secbutyl, and tertbutyl are good to know, let's just stick with the one, two, and three carbon ones. And, uh, oh, so let's not even do the four carbon one. So, uh, you know, when you have your exam, we'll keep it to one, two, and three carbon, noting that propyl and isopropyl are both three carbon side chains or substituents, um, that the difference is how they're connected to the rest of the molecule. And you can see that these are connected to the rest of the molecule by a bond. And we'll see what that means in a minute. Now let's talk about some naming rules. You've got these, we'll read over them. So the first thing you always do is determine the longest continuous and not necessarily straight chain of carbon atoms to determine the base name. That will determine what, if the longest chain is eight, that's going to be octane. If the longest chain is four, that's going to be butane. Always look for the longest chain. Any chain branching off of the longest chain is named as an alkyl group using the names that we just did. And I've got my fingers crossed that my examples only use methyl, ethyl, propyl, and isopropyl since I just came up with the, the, the circled ones that are not X'd out are the only ones you'll have to memorize. Uh, use a number that locates the branch's position on the longest chain and start numbering from the end with a branch closest to it. When there's more than one branch of the same kind, use a Greek prefix. And when there are two or more different branches, list them in alphabetical order. I know I went pretty fast there, but you've got them written down. Now let's actually do two naming examples. Um, from skeletal structures. We'll start with the one on the left. And it looks like, come back, we've got the longest chain there. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. Had we done on the four carbon, you can see there are one, two other carbons, which we might call 
uh, still with the orange, huh? Five and six, but you can see that seven is the longest number of carbons. So we've gone in the right direction. We've numbered them so that the first one is a two group. Had we started from the other end, it would be a one, two, three, four group. And the rules say number from the, so the side chains or the substituents have the lowest first number possible. We can see that this first one is a single carbon. Oh, let's go back to actually, and we'll go back to black now. It's just a single carbon, so carbon. And then the other one is a two carbon one. One carbon is a methyl group, and I'm gonna call it a two methyl because it's on the second carbon. We also have a four ethyl because it's two carbons and two carbons is an ethyl group. That's what those names came from. And so this is going to be two ethyl, sorry, two methyl, four ethyl, uh, heptane with seven carbons, that's hept, and it's an A and E because they're all single bonds, and those are the only things we're going to be naming are A and E anes. Now let's come over here. We've been kind to you so far and put the longest chain all in a row there. Now I'm going to see my first closest substituent is actually on the right to closest to the right end. So I'm going to number my carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is a decane for ten carbons, deca being ten, meaning ten. And I've got coming off the side here. Let's see if I can do to go with green. I've got a 2-methyl, I've got a 4-isopropyl, and I've got a 6-methyl, and I've got a 7-chloro, and uh, you will be expected to know the halogens as well. They're just chloro, fluoro, bromo, and iodo. Um, and that should be it for substituents. There are many more substituents that have names. Um, those are going to be the only ones that we will do. Shufla. And so now this is going to be, so alphabetically, chloro, and then isopropyl, and then we have a dimethyl. So this, this one over here is going to be 7-chloro, uh, four isopropyl, because I is next alphabetically, and there should be dashes between each of the numbers and each of the letters, and then two comma six dimethyl decane, and there's no space between dimethyl and decane, and those are two examples of naming. Alkanes. Our last bit of naming is going to be cyclos. And the cyclos are fairly easy compared, well, fairly easy, let's say, because um, you already know that three carbons is propane. Put them in a circle or in a ring, let's say, and you get cyclopropane, cyclobutane, cyclopentane, and cyclohexane. So if we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be cyclooctane. And I think that actually cyclooctane, I think you'd actually have to have the two O's in there. I'd have to think about that for a second. And some cyclooctane examples will be similar as far as priority of naming. And um, let's go back to black. So if we had something like this, so you're going to number 
So uh, you have the lowest numbers possible, which is similar to what we did before, or the lowest first number possible, first number possible. And then, however, because we've got two on the first one, we're actually going to name this. So let's see, it's a six member, so it's cyclohexane. We've got, uh, and we're, we could name this um, one, two, or one, two, the opposite way. We're going to name it one, two, because th this will be the first one because it's got two groups on it. So we do have the lowest possible numbers. So this is going to be a one, one, di methyl. And it's also going to be a two, ethyl. Ethyl comes before methyl. And so we're not numbering, uh, we're not alphabetizing the di part. So it's going to be two ethyl, one, one, di methyl, uh, cyclo, hexane, as an example of how to do cyclohexane naming. <laughs>